Ooh wee. It's Taco Tuesday, baby. And the residents of the town know it. We got a line. And while we're waiting in line, let's uh, take advantage of that time to have a little chat. In today's video, the topic will be centered around sex or lack thereof. And for all of y'all toxic sensitivity mafas in 2020, if you can't hack that, please just leave the video or do what you gotta do, unsub, I don't know. It's gonna be very PG-13, but you know, we live in this culture now where, you know, everything's fine tooth comb, microscope, scrutinized, everything, it gets blown way out of proportion. Just talking about natural things that happen with real people in real lives, AKA sex. And in my case today, uh, lack thereof, but there's a bit of a, a story <laughs> to spark it all off relative to what we're dealing with with the pandemia <laughs> and the masks and all the things. So, cause I, I've been out and about doing errands and I hadn't really noticed, like it just didn't really cross my mind until just today specifically. I was in a store and you know, like back in regular life society, you could have moments of, you know, checking somebody out and, you know, flirtation and, and, and see their gestures and, and understand maybe, okay, could I approach them? Could we have a little bit of a conversation? Whatever, whatever. And, you know, take advantage of that situation a little bit um, to connect with somebody potentially. And now in this society, I was having that with a woman so I was having one of those with like a woman, lady, gal, and we were kind of eye to eye, locking up, having little flirtatious eyes. But it's like where I live, it's getting cold, there's hats, there's toques, there's hoodies, and the mask. And it's like, you can only gauge somebody's attractiveness level from their eyes, basically, right? You get this. It's kind of like living in the burqa, in, in, in the Middle Eastern uh, country, societies, like their religion, the women have to wear the burqa, and it's like, you can't see anything but the eyes. And I feel like that's uh, what I was experiencing in a sense. Now you can get a, 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 a gauge on whether or not this person's attracted by their clothing, the way they carry themselves, um, their body and things like that. But for the most part, you can really only get the eyes. So it's, it's trippy, it's very, very trippy. And uh, it, uh, it's, it really throws me off, right? So, you know, we, I head out to the car and from my vehicle, I can actually just by luck see this girl get in her car and she takes off the, uh, the, uh, the mask and I'm like, oh, she is hot. My suspicions were right. But I say that to say this, <laughs> a lot can go wrong from here to here. You know what I mean? On a face, like a nose, lips, mouth, smile, all these things. That, those could be massive deal breakers in terms of attraction. Let's just be honest, right? You know, they could be have jacked up teeth or just a crazy nose or whatever the case may be. It's, you know, to each their own. Some people like different features, but you know, you just never know what you're dealing with with the mask. <laughs> and then that just got me all clued into the realization that like, you know, I accepted a long time ago in this pen situation that like, you know, it's gonna be, you know, drought season for a while. It's gonna be dry times. But now we're going into second wave lockdown. There's, you know, you can't, it's like no bars. There's nowhere to go, just like, people aren't freely going out and shooting the breeze to like, you know, possibly hook up or whatever. And uh, it just clicked in my head. I'm like, like, where could you even meet somebody to have like a casual encounter with these days other than like a Tinder and these things. But even then, like these Tinder apps, are whack as shit they do not work and for dudes now if you didn't know the women have all the control on these apps now so it's like in order to even see who liked you as a man you have to like pay like i think it's 24.99 a month or something to, just to even see your likes and shit so to even start messaging so these these apps are stupid as fuck and then i just realized like holy shit like i'm really in for the long haul here and i've already been in for the long haul of the drought season so I was just kind of tripping on that after that. And I'm like, you know, at what point is it even acceptable, especially in, in this, in this 
society situation right now, like at the very least where you might be able to meet somebody like out in a grocery store or whatever, it's like, but it's so awkward. Like you can't actually have a conversation where you can see gestures or, or signs or anything like that of, of interest, of intrigue. You're like, you're muffled talking through a mask. There's just so many like prohibitary, if that's even a word, like just things prohibiting a successful like random connection where you could like, sh like maybe grab a number and then then you can start talking like from home and shit, right? So it's just so strange. It's like, how do you even meet somebody in this climate, right? Like right now, yeah. And uh, it's just crazy. Now, this isn't to say that I'm like Jones in. I'm not the type of person that like needs it or I die. Like I'm good. Like I'll make it. It's no big deal. It's no worries. But it's like I used to live a life though. And we all did, but me more so in a larger city now compared to where I'm at where it was like go out meet people boom always like it's on the go you know you got a rotation going and shit because that's my life I'm a single man I enjoy being a single man uh that's where I'm at in my life and I I just I think it's fun it's enjoyable I keep things casual and that's what I want for myself so um but yeah it's just like I was so used to to that and then now this it's like how do you even how do you even like get something going? I don't even know. The other thing too is like I've been gone from here so long. I have no I have no social base anymore. I have no like connection points to to really anybody. I can't just hit up like an old flame or something, right? Like and uh, like I just don't know any any like ladies here anymore. So there's that. And even more frustrating to that point is how long this fucking drive through line has taken. So I figured I'd just get this conversation out of the way because I was going to talk about it uh, during the eating. But now we'll just handle this and then get to the eating. So if you want to skip ahead from here to the eating, go for it. If you're interested in this conversation, keep listening. But what's even more frustrating is there's no lack of interest from women on my side, though, like on the internet, <laughs> you know? I've got plenty of interest flying my way uh you know all the time and you know i talk to some of these girls and stuff and but it's just like they all live in unreachable territories right i'd have to be have a uh like an invisible ufo at this point to even make those uh situations a reality so it's just like it's like i got interest from many attractive girls that you know i connect with but it's just impossible to reach them. <laughs> so this life is so crazy right now. And I just, it's like really one that I'm trying to, to learn and understand because it's drought season out here for, for many a people, uh, for those in relationships, I guess not so much for you, unless you're in one of those relationships where you're sick of each other and you don't have sex, which those are a real thing, by the way, they happen. So, uh, shout out to you if you're getting it in, if you're, if you're finding <laughs> new ways to get it in, in this, in this crazy world. I myself have personally chosen a while ago to take a back seat to that whole life. But as time moves forward here, it would be nice to throw a little spice in the old life every once in a while, or have at least the option, which we don't now. So very interesting. I'm one car away from the, the the ordering box though, finally. This is crazy, I can't believe how many people are dead ass committed to getting tacos, but I got shit all else better to do than to rack up some tacos and chill with you. So I'm gonna get, I think, six beef hard shell tacos and then this thing called a Mexi Fries Deluxe that they have here at Taco Time. Now this isn't Taco Bell, I don't have that luxury now. We don't have a Taco Bell here. And it devastates me. It hurts my heart. I personally love Taco Bell. Mainly, well, there's many things about that I love. Let's just leave it at that. But we're pulling up. Hey, uh, can I get a large Mexi Fries Deluxe with extra ranchero on it? Uh, no, I could also get six hard shell beef tacos, and that'll be it. So a large Mexi fried deluxe, add in ranchero, and then six hard shell, it's going to be 21.80. Please drive out. 
Thanks. Okay, let's find a stealth camping location to shove tacos in our face. Okay, we're doing a semi-blend-in technique. We're at near the, a dog park. I was gonna park in a completely empty parking lot, but then I figured, nah, that's weird. Even though I wouldn't be committing any offenses, I'm just gonna park far at the dog park here. Just so I look like I'm here with my dog, but I'm not. I'm really here with you guys eating <laughs> tacos in a truck. All right, we are parked and the sack is procured, but just before we move forward and plate up, I want to show you guys a surprise. <laughs> Your guy's getting highs off his own supplies. <laughs> oh, I brought my own tub of sour cream. You know I ain't paying extra for that bullshit. <laughs> Over there. Over there. Now, beyond the sour cream, I brought a sour cream and spoon, a true form napkin rag, and a tray for taco drippings. So, we're doing it. <laughs> We're doing it. And we've also had a whole PG-13 sexual conversation, okay? So, hope you enjoyed that. If you didn't watch it, I don't know. If you liked it, like it. It's a different format today. It's a different format. But let's plate up these tacos and get to smushing. Yo, when they link you more than one sauce per every taco, they gave me seven. I got six tacos. That's when you know it's real. Pop the top on the Mexi Deluxe. Ground beef, almost like a bruschetta, cheese, sour cream, potato tots. All right, y'all, we're all set up. First thing to do, just look at the spicy sauce. That's a mild though. I'm going immediately to the hot boys. These are the Deluxe. Tater tots, Mexi Deluxe, just loaded up tots, but you gotta load them up with a mild sauce, of course, for them to be official legit and that much better. There you go. This is taco time, my friends. I don't know where it is across the world, but I know it's a few places. And it is legit. I love this so much. Oh my God. I haven't had one of these since I remember last year I did a video about the Stephanie Sue and Nikocado avocado drama. I had a minor brief commentary on it. And I ate taco time, I remember. And this guy's on the list every single time. Mm. <clears throat> just such a perfect blend of so many things so many good flavors going on that fake ass cheese sour cream just that crunchy almost mushy potato at the same time And that like almost bruschetta peak with the guile. With the ground beef. Out of this world. I've been craving taco time for some time now. I actually was going to do a whole different video today and cook at home, but time and errands and things got the best of me. And it was fate. I even drove to the grocery store this morning <clears throat> to get some supplies and I heard the Taco Tuesday, Taco Time advert on the radio. 
So, I think it was preordained. Save that for after a couple more tacos. Okay, though I do love the Mexi Deluxe, you just can't beat the crunch and OG nature of a good hard shell beefy taco, you know? That's just what it's gotta be. Oh, watch that drizzle. Watch that drizzle. All right? And I thought Subway in the car was risky. Tacos might be the most risky one, I think. Just crumbles and falls like Roman empires. Mm. So yeah, if you watch that first piece and it resonated with you, please inform me about your celibacy and sex sobriety. in 2020. This is a real thing. That's a pandemic, you know? It just dawned on me that this is the pro move. Leave it in the middle of the wrap. Right, can't spill anywhere. And in the spirit of uh, our sexual motif today, take it from the back. And then, take it from the front. Is there even such thing as a front and a back on a taco? Don't think so. A taco is the food version of a palindrome. Race car. Hannah with an H. Man, this uh, <clears throat> this hot sauce is lighting me up. I gotta go straight up for a sour cream dream because I can't hack that other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's more my pace, white boy. They fill her up good. No slouch on the beef. Two bucks a pop on Tuesdays. Pretty good deal. Yeah, that's a good deal. Two bucks one of these for sure. If we want a regular day, 
It's actually a fairly expensive place to go. In terms of fast food. Also, hashtag Canada. Our food is just way more expensive here. Go ahead and finish this guy off. A little dabble do ya. I've been low key sitting here wondering the whole time if these dogs could smell my food. I'm about 50 yards away and in a truck. Surprise, spoiled it. I'm in my new truck. Not new truck, but new to me, but 2011. I'm hyped. So nice to be So nice to be back on the road in something I own. And I own own it outright. No car payments. I just own it straight up. Got it for a sick deal. Has a lot of clicks on it. Everything else is great. Interior is pretty nice. Body's great. I really just hope it lasts me a couple years. I just need to squeeze a couple years out of it. So I'm hoping, wishing and praying that she lasts. I find comfort in knowing that uh, I know exactly where it came from. It's from my dad's buddy's uh, business and he runs a very meticulous tight ship over there. And uh, it was part of his, his fleet, his work fleet. So yeah, so work truck. It's been driven distances, maybe a little bit hard, but it has seen routine maintenance its whole life due to the fact that he runs a tight ship and he wouldn't just let his, his, uh, his trucks go to shit, right? Like you want to stretch their life as far as they can. So Also, the reason why I got it so cheap. I guess when you get rid of a truck from your fleet, it becomes devalued so far uh, to the point where it's like not worth it to keep on the fleet, just replace it and sell it off for exactly what it's currently worth according to the, uh, it's worth relative to, to the fleet, I guess, and like the year and whatever. So I got it for the exact price that it was worth relative to his business. Whereas if I bought it from Joe Schmo, Joe Schmo would have been charging probably, I would say three or four times more than what I got it for. I feel like this video's got a lot jammed into it already, so in another video, I will show you the uh, exterior of it. Maybe do like a little truck tour or something like that. I just gotta wait for my seat covers to come in because the driver's side is a little bit botched from so many in and outs, in and outs, in and outs. 
of dudes and just like rugged gear so yeah i just want to get those on first and then uh i'll probably do some sort of a little look over a little tour of it and then we'll have like a other meal in it as well obviously it's also great for just escaping out to the city, to the city chilling and having a meal so um <clears throat> i got six i knew i couldn't eat six uh, I knew I was probably going to tap out at about four with that large uh, fries thing. So I'm good for now. I got to go work on my sister's dishwasher with her and my dad now. <laughs> so living that real, real life. Okay. So, so I do hope you enjoyed that one. Until the next one, get laid, <laughs> eat good, live well, stay true. <laughs>